welcome into First Take. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm Molly Karam, and I am so excited for today because it is all ladies. We have Marley Rivera, writer and reporter for ESPN and ESPN Deportes, Claudia Trejos, reporter, analyst, and commentator for ESPN Deportes and International, and Anita Marks, who has been here before. Welcome back again on ESPN Radio 98.7 in New York. Ladies, thank you so much for traveling in to be here and uh, doing the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. We really Muchas appreciate gracias. it. We're going to have a lot of fun, right? Oh, it's of course. Uh, okay. But first, we're going to discuss something pretty serious. So we start um, in 2003. The NFL adopted the Rooney Rule, which is a policy that requires teams to interview minority candidates for head coaching positions in hopes of hiring a larger percentage of minority coaches into the league. So according to Mike Sando of ESPN.com, things haven't improved 13 years later. Please listen to these numbers. 80 of NFL's current 85 offensive coordinators, quarterback coaches, and offensive quality control coaches are white, including all 37 with the word quarterback in their job descriptions. The NFL isn't the only league that is struggling with this issue. Of the 30 managers in MLB, only two are minorities. Nine of the 30 NBA head coaches are minorities. Claudia, I want to start with you. What is going on with the lack of minority hirings? Well, we got to start with the fact that nobody has given anybody an opportunity. And remember, the head coaches usually bring in their own coordinators, their own assistants, and those are the ones that eventually will take over that position. So if you're not opening that door for that lower tier of coaches, if we can actually call them lower tier then obviously we're gonna have a serious deficiency on top case in point today you just gave us the numbers let's look down we're not being represented further down not even being represented let's not even go into the college area that college area is even more deficiency even though the players do represent the diversity that is America it's not trickling up and unless we open the door and give all these guys the opportunity to start somewhere, start at the bottom, they will not come up as head coaches. It just doesn't happen. Rule says usually the quarterback, those coaches are the ones that come up as managers, you know, even first baseman coaches. Those are the ones that will take the hitting coaches. Those are the ones that will take over the managing position, also head coaches in the NFL. And let's not even talking about NBA. So if we're not giving the bottom part the opportunity, it's not going to come up. I think it's... And I'm sorry for pausing because I think it's it's just staggering. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're looking at it, and Gloria, we, we had the discussion before even getting on the air, you look at the numbers for Hispanic players, and if we extrapolate it to, to MLB, 29%, let's just call it a third, mm -hmm. you know, are all born in Latin American countries, and there are zero, zero managers. In the last, I was, we were just looking some notes from ESPN Stats and Info, and since 2010, the hiring, they've hired, I believe it's 45 managers, only five of those have been Hispanic. And currently, there isn't even one of them. So how can we explain that? Are we saying, like, like Claudia, it's almost like there's this glass ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're good enough to coach, but you're not good enough to be up here. You're not, you're not good enough to be the boss. And that, for me, it just offends my sensibility. And also, there's something lost here, and it's the same thing that happens in the NFL, right? Like, the Rooney Rule is supposed to be helping the way the Selig Rule is supposed to be helping also in MLB. We're talking about these people can relate better. It doesn't mean that, that a white coach cannot coach a, an African-American player. This has nothing to do with that. But there are certain sensibilities. There's a language or same situation. Culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really, it, it, it benefits everybody. But this is what the problem is. The coaching system, believe it or not, is a bloodline, right? <laughs> I, think, I think the problem is, is that we're looking at, at the top as opposed to looking at the bottom. I think we need to start at the bottom, the Rooney Rule at the mm. bottom in regard to coordinators. Because who are getting the head coaching positions? Coordinators, okay? And also quarterback coaches because this day and age Tradition. of the NFL, yeah. it's, it's, it's all about the quarterback mm -hmm. these days. It's all about mm -hmm. the passing game. It's putting up those big points. So those are the coaches that you're seeing get the promotions and get the head coaching positions. For example, let's take Hugh Jackson, okay, who was yep. just hired by the Cleveland Browns. He was fired, as we know, in Oakland, okay, went back to Cincinnati. Him and Marv Lewis, extremely tight, was a, a DB coach, a running back coach, then became the offensive coordinator and now has an opportunity in Cleveland. Guess what? Both his offensive coordinator and his defensive coordinator, African American. This is what needs to change. And, and so I, I, I believe in the Rooney rule. Mm -hmm. I just think it starts in the wrong place. I think it should but, start in the court, the coordinating positions as opposed to the head coaching positions because that's where these guys are going to, that's where the African American coaches mm -hmm. are going to get the, the elevation to become head coaches. And they will hone those but, talents to become coaches. But now my, I have a huger issue if there's such a thing. Yes. Once they do make it, they are held at a completely different standard. I mean, case in point, we look at the Giants, we look at the Jets, losing seasons. They stayed, the, the head coaches stayed there forever. 
We have somebody like Lovey was given two years. Why? Why does that it's, happen? That is super interesting because Freddy Gonzalez's point to bring it back to the to MLB. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about your point before is that that may work in the in, in the NFL. It will not work at MLB because at MLB there are so many minor league coaches and like the equivalent of a coordinator, the equivalent of, a, of an offensive. I mean, right now, just looking at a, at, a, at a minor list, there's over 10 Latino coaches that have either first base positions, you know, bench Hitting coaches. coaches. That, yeah, so that happens. So it's different, right? Like for both leagues. But what Claudia said is just so interesting because you don't get a chance to stay. You have to be better than anyone else. And that was mm -hmm. Freddie Gonzalez's point when he was, yeah. Freddie Gonzalez deserved to be fired. That's the point. You know, you, you have a terrible record. You deserve to be fired. But he always felt that he had to perform better than anyone else. Yeah, the Giants do have an new coach now yeah and um and the jets have a minority head coach in todd bowles but to that point do you feel like there is a shorter leash for minority head coaches rather than white head coaches anita from what you've seen in covering the <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know so much i, I mean listen he, again I'll, I'll go back to hugh jackson because he was really the one that's front mm -hmm. and center coming into this this nfl season the cleveland browns are a hot mess let's face it i, I mean <laughs> yeah let's, 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 let's let's call it how it is i i think he's going to be given a, a good three to five years to turn that organization around so i, I think it depends on the organization i think it depends mm. on the ownership i think it depends on the fan base what the expectation is new york city that's a city that doesn't accept rebuilding right. but rex ryan was there forever cleveland, cleveland well not Forever. Well, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. No, but, but compared but to others, I think Cleveland is a city that yeah. can accept a rebuilding will, time. Will I don't do think it? New York can. Will and they do it the way that they allow Rivera to fail and then eventually succeed? Because we I, saw I it think, with I think, Ron Rivera. Will I he think have the chance in Cleveland? I, I think. I think the Haslam family. I think they're going to give Hugh Jackson time to kind of ch change that organization around. And I just want to share in, in regards to the bloodline and, and what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Bill Walsh went out and, and hired very influential black assistants. Ray Rhodes, Dennis Green, they had their chance at, at, at head coaching positions. Mike Tomlin, Raheem Morris, these are coaches that are from that Bill Walsh bloodline, okay? Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells, unfortunately, not so much. And, and we are in an era right now where we're seeing the, the, the branches of those of trees now get their mm -hmm. opportunity. And here's an ESPN stat, 14 members of Bill Parcells coaching tree uh, were hired as head coaches from 91 to 2013. Only Romeo Cronell was the only African American out of that. So again, I mean, just just more support in regard to how the Rooney Rule obviously isn't working. Mm -hmm. How how can you get? I and I and I believe in the Rooney Rule, but how do you get it to work? Again, I think you need to implement it at the offensive coordinating or coordinating positions, as opposed to or as well as the head coaching position. So the awareness should be brought to a head coach or the front office who should who should be well, responsible of making see, now, the Rooney rule actually be implemented but, properly see now 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 we get it now we get That's into it, a the whole, league the NFL. but now here we get into a whole nother animal okay when you're a head coach you fight to hire your own staff. Yeah, you bring, everybody does. Because, because, and that's the coach. Because you're, you're constantly to. looking over your back, mm -hmm. right? You're con you just, you know, because, hey, look, we all want to succeed. We all want that opportunity. If you're a coordinator, you know, chances are you want to be head coach. So if, as if you're a head coach, you want to bring somebody in that you trust, right? So so now it kind of gets into a whole other element, and, and that is head coaches that, A, are open and willing to bring in and, and truly give African Americans an opportunity to be coordinators and guys that they could trust and want to be as part of their team because they're fighting to make those decisions. Big reason why Tom Coughlin, by the way, did not go to Philadelphia, did not have all say mm -hmm. in regard to his staff mm -hmm. that he would have been able to bring over the Philadelphia Eagles and be the head coach. That's why Tom Coughlin's not coaching this year. But, so coaches fight for that. But and they and and if and if if the, if if the coaching society wants to make it better, they have to realize that this is what they need to do. But it doesn't work. The Rooney Rule doesn't work. The silly rule doesn't work at MLB. I mean, it's it's amazing. Just think about this. I mean, most of we can mention Big Poppy's tour right now, right? Like we're so excited. Yeah. You know, this is just all this. We're talking about there isn't a single Hispanic manager. Major League Baseball. I mean, how can so then the Selig rule doesn't work? I mean, the joke is, and Alex Cora, who obviously is an employee of ESPN, mm -hmm. you know, he 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 told me the story where he went to get interviewed and yes. he didn't even know he went to Vanderbilt. They didn't even go through his resume. So then I understand that, and 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 we've talked to Doug Glanville about this, and everyone says it. There has to be a rule because it opens the door. But then once you open the door, if you're there to just do a check mark, what's the point? And not only that, a lot of people are not getting even the opportunity. So I was talking to Bruce Bochy last night. We had Wednesday Night Baseball, and I said, why haven't your guys, your staff, we have Bam Bam. I mean, this is, these are people who are super talented. You know, and knowledgeable, and obviously. Not, and Roberto Kelly, and they, didn't, they don't even get the interview. So they also need, which is, you mentioned something so, so 
so specific, which was they need to be recommended. They need to be part of the crew, mm -hmm. right? Like people I know, you. if I know Molly, I'm going to recommend her because I know how good she is at her job. If I know Anita, if I know so Claudia, relationship business. that's not happening. And then we tend to hang out with the same people. Right? So why isn't so it somebody like, for example, Ozzy Guillen, why, why wasn't he given the opportunity to bring his own staff and that same staff grow, be honed into those positions? Well, because it's what you said, you know, the expectations are yes. different and, they, you know, they're, they're in Major League Baseball, I don't know how it works, you know, as clearly in the NFL, but they manage from the top down, you know, and there's a lot of, it's a different style of management right now, especially with saber metrics and so on. So these old school managers are not allowed to stay maybe as well, often. You just said something very interesting because regardless sports, it's still the old boys club. And one of the things that I like to bring <laughs> it up, is. Well, it, it is. is. And I'd like to bring up the NBA. Eric Spolstra is a perfect example. Pat Riley took him out of tape, literally, and he's the guy he trusts. But that, he's like, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting, because he's like his son. Yeah, it, Mama, he's like his son. So Absolutely. Eddie Perez at the Atlanta Braves, hopefully it will happen because he's like Bobby Cox's son. So maybe when this that position happens next year, maybe it's the Braves. I have a question for you. Obviously, you're in a lot of locker rooms and speaking to a lot of these baseball players. Have you discussed this subject with any of them? Absolutely, but you know what? They're, they're just so careful. You yeah, know, because they don't want to say, and the one thing that people don't want to wave, and I will be very, very, very mm -hmm. clear with this, it is not a discrimination or racism flag. This is very important. Everyone says, including all these players, you know, Sandy Alomar, who's been a candidate many times, Money Acta, who's gotten, you know, hired yeah. and mm -hmm. fired several times, and, and many others, they say it. We do not believe there's racism or discrimination. We just don't believe we don't get the same amount of opportunities. Now, it's a complicated Why? answer. Mm -hmm. So that's a, it's a very complicated answer. If I knew the answer to that, I probably would make a lot of money. I actually, I have <laughs> asked a number of African-American American coaches who have been a part of the Rooney Rule, who have gone to be interviewed at certain... Yep. Certain NFL teams, you know, well, if you if you know that you don't have a chance, why are you going? Why are you go? Why are you going? So what are they and saying? Their response is the experience, because I mean, you are you walk in for an interview, you need to come in, whether you're offensive or defensive coordinator, you need to lay out exactly what your game plan is, and you got to sell yourself. Who, you have to sell yourself. Who are the coaches you're going to hire? What is what's going to be what's going to be the mentality and the atmosphere that you're going to? I mean, it is an experience to go in and mm -hmm. interview with a team. A, it's the experience, and also it's kind of like well. You know, if I do this, then maybe next year I'll be, I'll be. Anita, what you're, you're saying, saying some guys know considered. they're being just brought in oh, part absolutely. of the Rooney Rule, and Check they're not getting the job. Absolutely, and they and they are participating anyway because a, the ex it's a great experience, and also you know down the line, well I did it this time. Maybe next year or two years from now, I'll seriously be considered. The other mm -hmm. side of the coin of that is what happened to Sandy Alomar, that he had so many interviews, never got an opportunity, and you get discouraged. So it's the opposite. You know, so it's of very course, interesting. Of course, and then it looks bad. You get tired. So, no, but no, also, you can't. Here's you the can. thing. If you're the person that's constantly getting brought in, you know you're not getting the job, but just, just filling the quota or the check mark, then it looks bad on your resume. Well, he's been brought in for five different positions, hasn't gotten them. So that also reflects poorly on the candidate. And it breaks your spirit. There has to be a point where you see that you believe you can contribute, that you have to be. It has nothing to do with the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. It has to do with your ability, right? You believe you can do this job and do mm -hmm. it well, and you still don't get the chance, even though you did what you said. You put in the time. You did the minors. You did the coordinating job. Joey Cora can't get a job. He's working in single A because he can't get a job in the major. And so. he's extremely capable. He's done a great job it in is. the amateur. It's, it's he's fantastic. And with that being said, because you have done the time, you cannot be discouraged. I mean, we've all... I, we're four ladies doing a very interesting <laughs> job, male-dominated environment, and we've all had moments where we go, really? <laughs> but guess what? That's part of reality. That's true. That's part of life. And if you have done the time, if you've done the homework, guess what? You're going to have to keep knocking on doors. But because there's going to be one day, I assure you, that somebody like Pat Riley is going to adopt you. Which is somebody the line. Somebody's going to believe. Yeah. That, that's it's the line. And many actors exactly. said, I go every time they ask me because one day I will be the best one and they can't say no. Mm -hmm. And I get that point. But I also get the fact that there are families involved. There's a spirit. There's an ego. Mm -hmm. A lot of these are former athletes. And there is a point where you say, why not me? Let's leave it there. I appreciate you guys having the conversation. And, and there are obviously some progress from the female perspective. We're all doing the show together. Oh, yes. <laughs> this wouldn't have Thank happened you. a few yeah. years ago. And we're going to delve <laughs> more into this issue and something I want to get your thoughts on involving the Hispanic community and the uh, comments from Lou Holtz a little bit later. So we'll discuss that and can't wait to hear your perspective is there.